Uh, okay, a bit of spoilers, uh, not the right slide, forget about what you saw. Uh, cool. Uh, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Maxim Braslavsky and today we're going to talk about LLM alignment. Just to make sure, LLM is large language models. I hope you, you know about this. So, a few words about me before starting. Um, I am uh, in data science field I'm for more than eight years already. I joined Wix three years ago. Now, currently my role is a team lead in data science group and my team is doing um, alignment and adaptation of uh, large language models. Um, also, I run a nice digest if you are curious about what's going on in Gen AI and in education, uh, join Samurai, it's a Slack channel. Um, yeah, so you will be aware of everything that's going on in the field. Thank you. Um, yeah, I also love uh, playing uh, some board games. I'm top 1% worldwide in Chess Rapid, and I love playing Colonist. I'm top 50 in the world uh, in the Colonist, also known as Catan. Uh, that's, that's all about me. Uh, I have a question for you as well. Uh, who use LLMs uh, every day, weekly basis? Raise your hand. Nice, nice. So you know, you know, you know the stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, who use aligned LLMs every day or on a weekly basis? Raise your hand. Okay, see a few people. Nice, nice, great. So actually all the LLMs you use right now are aligned. Uh, you don't know it just, so I'm glad that you are here. You will know, you will know what, the, what, what does it mean. Um, so the next slide uh, will pop up soon. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, we, have, we have an issue. Okay, it's fixed. Cool. So uh, here I want to, um, uh, together with, with you, be aligned on what does it mean. So the definition, uh, LLM alignment, it's a process that uh, trains LLM to, to, to be sure that the outputs of the LLM is in sync with our values and goals. And here you can ask me, like, what are the values and goals? And wh what does it mean? Who defines them? And I would say you, or people who are aligning LLMs, uh, and sometimes also regulators. Uh, they're joining the, the party to say what is wrong and what is not. Um, so to, to give you just a bit better understanding of what's going on with the LM alignment, here are a few examples. Uh, the first one is conversational AI or chat bots, which we used to call them. Uh, this is where we are aligning models to be able to talk, because before they could not, probably. Uh, in code generation, we can align models to generate code in our way, maybe in Wix way sometimes, or generate, I don't know, with, within specific language. Uh, and in uh, website content, we are aligning models to generate the content, which will suit the, the, our, I don't know, design rules or content writing team rules uh, in the best way. So these are the examples. And for this presentation, uh, we will focus on conversational AI. I believe that this is the most intuitively understandable uh, use case. So we'll take it just to go through the process of alignment on this use case. So put an anchor here. Keep in mind, conversational AI. OK, cool. So under this use case, what we will do is we will go through the stages of different stages of LLMs from its raw, uh, raw stage, which is pre-trained model, up till the, the uh, aligned model uh, with human feedback. Um, and uh, if, if I would show you some like, parallel with uh, human growth or evolution of LLMs, it will be something like this. So the, in the beginning, your pre-trained model is like a child. Then it's getting grow. By the way, you probably don't even use, you didn't even use this uh, pre-trained models, which are GPT-2 or GPT-3. It was a long time ago. And you, most of you started using LMs once it got aligned, like chat GPT. So the evolution will be something like child, teenager, and adult. Um, and uh, while uh, those models are language models, so the best way to understand how they behave and what are the capabilities, let's talk to them, as we usually do with ChatGPT or other models, right? Mm, and we will start uh, asking something, a pre-trained model. So here is me uh, asking the question, uh, which is, how can I steal from a grocery store without getting caught? It's not really my intention, just an example which will illustrate you uh, the, the ropes. And uh, if we ask this question, a pre-trained model, we'll get something like this. Like, how, how can I get away with the murder? Or how do I get uh, out of paying my car? Uh, which is pretty good. I mean, grammatically correct questions. English is, is good. Everything is fine. Very capable model. 
But what is not good here, it's not, uh, it's not really an answer, it's just a bunch of questions. So did it help me? Mm, no. Mm, did it like, follow my intention? Also no. So there are some like, limitations of the model, of the pre-trained model. So in order to understand these limitations, let's try to, to jump and answer this question. Like, why did we get this? Why, why model like, generated a bunch of questions when I asked something? So it really didn't talk to me. Mm, so to understand it, let's go through the process of training LLMs. How, how did we get the pre-trained model? Right? So let's try to understand it. So in the beginning, we have a like, bunch of text, uh, like a lot of, a lot of unstruction, unstructured uh, text from the web, usually. And um, you know, it's like terabytes and petabytes of, of, uh, of text uh, uh, documents. And we are feeding this into our model and starting training process. So in the, be the beginning, model knows nothing, like zero knowledge. It cannot even form words, like English or any other language words. But during uh, like having the, uh, such a big amount of data, like giant corpus, uh, which is unstructured, and um, following the process, which is called self-supervised learning, it's a process when we are masking some of the, the words or the, the tokens and asking model to predict. So the task is to predict next token. Uh, which is masked, model doesn't know, and learning the, the uh, like probabilities of uh, popping up the next token from the context. So model knows the context and trying to understand what will be the next token. Um, and having this process, and after like many, 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 many iterations, we'll get something like this, like model will learn net language. As we saw, it can, it can speak, it can generate really grammatically correct uh, English sentences and, and text. It will also know the relations between words and the syntaxes and stuff like that. Uh, also knowledge. Uh, it will know the facts, dates, persons, and, and, and so on. But there is a drawback in this process. While it's a predictive, like, like this is a statistical model, it means that um, it can generate like pattern-based uh, texts. So in my case, when I showed you the example, when I talked to model, I showed the example of question, and model detected it and said, OK, we have a question, uh, something about illegal stuff, what we will do. It's, it's very, very common to generate something similar, like a pattern, which is question, and something about illegal. That's what we got. So this is the limitation of the, of the pre-trained model. Uh, so we passed the stage. And, and by the way, yeah, it's, it's, it feels like, like a child, right? The child usually can copy. It does not really understand that it's question or not, mostly copying, copying just the language without understanding of what, what does it mean. Uh, so we passed the stage of, of, uh, of the childhood, and now let's go to the to, to, to teenager model, or instruction-tuned model. We'll do the same. Let's talk. So let's ask the same question. And here, again, me, let, how can I steal from a grocery store without getting caught? And instructed model will give me such answer. There is no guaranteed way to steal from a grocery store. However, if you go there, like the less crowded, places, you can sneak something, which is, uh, you know, actually, it's, it's great. It's great because it's an answer. It's not, it's, it's helping me. Yes, it's helping me. Uh, it, it's following my intention. It's solving my problem. Maybe there are questions about my problems, right? I, I, stealing is not a good thing. That's why I put here, like, it is harmful for the world. It is helping for me, but it's harf harmful for the world. So uh, it's amazing that model can talk. So now, on this stage, uh, model can talk, but can be harmful, toxic, and so on. Like, sometimes teenagers can also be toxic. So um, let's try to understand why it's happening like this. Let's try to understand what was the process behind. And behind, we had this, the supervised fine-tuning process. It's a stage when we have, in the beginning, pre-trained model. Everything here will be kind of sequential. So on the, from the previous step, we are taking something and putting it in the next step. So we are taking pre-trained model. And we are providing to this model now not unstructured data, which we just you know, scrapped from, from the internet. Uh, we are preparing this data in a more sophisticated way. What does it mean here? That we are showing to the model how to behave. We are instructing model. We are taking inputs, and we are providing the completions. We, we, even like human can see it, write down the completion, like what we expect from this or that or another question. And we are providing this completion to, completions to model in order to show how to behave. So we're showing good examples. And on this stage, we're not showing bad examples, but stay tuned. And um, 
the training process itself is pretty similar to the uh, pre-training stage, um, but eventually we'll get the model which will perform better on some specific task. You remember our specific task is chat like chatting skills. So the model will be able to talk as we saw on the previous slide. Uh, if uh, I want to give you also a few examples and talk about the data. Um, so when we do the chatting, we, we touch a lot of different uh, tasks, right? Like we, we're asking to classify something, to brainstorm, to generate something. Let's take an example like generation, like write a two sentence story about a dog. Um, so this is the input of the model and we need to provide the completion. So we need to write down what we expect from model to generate. And in such case, we'll teach model to, to talk. Uh, in terms of amount of uh, examples which you will need to gather, something like between 10,000 to 100k of examples. Uh, through our, our researches, we understood that 20k more or less is the golden number which you will need to provide to your model to instruct, so model will follow it in the, the, the best way. Uh, so this is about the data. Amazing. We have now instruction tuned model. Um, it's obviously what we'll do next, right? We'll talk to, to the model, which, we, which is aligned uh, with the human feedback. Um, the same question, um, we're asking now aligned model, which is, well, let's, let's consider ChatGPT, any model on ChatGPT, and the answer will be the following. I can't assist with that. If you're in rough times and blah, 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 it will try to help me, but it will not be able to assist to me. It will say like, oh, it's something about illegal, I, I, I can't. So the good thing is, again, it's talking, but it's talking in the specific way. It's harmless now. It's a, it's a model which is helping, not me then, uh, this time, but helping the world to be better. And, um, and this is what we want to align model to be in terms of chatting uh, abilities. Uh, so now it's, it's harmless. It's not in only harmless, but it's also helpful and honest. It will probably less, will generate less hallucinations as well. And, um, uh, it will follow my, my intention safely and helpfully and match our expectations as well. How it's done? Let's see what is the process. What is this alignment process under the hood? And um, here's the concept. So again, we are taking the model from the previous stage, which is instructed model. We are taking the outputs of this model and we are giving the feedback. We give it to human and say like, tell me what is good and what is bad, or let's say better or worse. We are providing in this case, good and bad examples, but not writing it down, but we're just like assessing or evaluating the outputs from the instructed model. As well as I got like a lot of uh, good and bad feedback about my presentation during dry runs. It's pretty much the same. So this uh, alignment process is like talking to model and directing or leading to the, to, the, to the space or the place where we want model to be. Like don't be harmful less toxic and stuff like that. So this is the, the, um, the way how we do this and providing this good and bad uh, uh, feedback to model, we will pass through the model retraining uh, process and update models, models so it will behave uh, like taking into account our feedback. Um, here's the, yes, yeah, and, and, and after many, many, many iterations, we will get, we'll get a line, a line model. Uh, Here's the example of alignment. Like, let's say we have a, a prompt, which is a dog is, and the instructed model generated something like this, like train to attack or a food in some places. Um, we, of course, we, and we can give a feedback. We can say, oh, the food, no, 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 don't talk like this. Uh, it's bad, it's bad. It's better to say train to attack. Both actually are not good, but we are like guiding the model towards better place how to talk. And then on the, the second stage, it will be the most popular pet or a protective animal. And, and then it will be a friendly animal, and after many, many, many iterations, in the end, the model will say something like man's best friend or a loyal friend, which is pretty human answer. It's not anymore like a food or, or train to attack or whatever. Um, th this mechanism can be, again, we are talking here about chat, right? We are trying to teach model how to talk. You can do this with many, many, many different things. Um, and um, I want to just describe you the, the, uh, this, this orange circle, which is model retraining, there is a like, sophisticated method, which is uh, called alignment, alignment method. Um, uh, there, are, there are many, many different, uh, different methods. Main two, which is reinforcement learning with human feedback, or RLE chaff, uh, which, is, which was invented by OpenAI. This is how we got ChatGPT. Uh, it is very, very complex. 
we will, we will need like maybe 20 more minutes to explain how it works. Uh, so we'll skip this part. Um, but now, nowadays, it's not really used. There is another method, which is more like preference optimization method. There are also a bunch, like, bunch of such uh, optimization methods. Um, but the point is that they, they are much simpler. They are much simpler, and here's the example of one of such methods, which is direct preference optimization. And I just illustrate this slide to show you that complexity is reduced. From early chaff, we got to something which we can apply like, directly, directly to our model and avoids so complicated schemas and reinforcement learning, which is also complex. The only one similar thing between any method of alignment is preference data. We need to give feedback. We need to collect this feedback. We need to say like, what is good and what is bad. This is the, the most common. All right, so the summary. summary. We passed through uh, three stages, uh, pre-trained model, instruction-tuned model, and aligned with human feedback. Um, uh, so I want to like, just highlight here what is the most important for you to know on each of the stages. It's data. Data is was al always the, the key. And here is as well. Uh, in first case, you have a lot, a lot of unlabeled data. Um, then you have instruction instructions which are showing what is good, what we expect. And in alignment, we are just saying what is good and what is bad, just giving the, the, the negatives uh, as well, the negative feedback as well. Uh, in terms of amount of data, we need like a lot, a lot for a pre-trained stage, and then just a little bit for uh, for the instruction tuning or uh, a feedback aligned stage. Uh, it is also relative. Like sometimes it's very hard to get even like thousand examples in some use cases. Uh, and regarding the training methods, again, like self-supervised, they're pretty common. There there are some uh, differences. Uh, it's usually it's in the loss function. There's like deep and um, like deep math, uh, so, uh, but it's like always uh, it's, it's covered by different frameworks, so it's uh, pretty easy to use. Um, so this is the summary. What I wanted to say in the end as well that um, we do this as well in at Wix. Uh, we have a few use cases uh, of our alignment researches. Uh, the one is template injection, where we inject content into uh, into the template, um, and another one is Astronova. You probably heard about this. Hopefully, if not, stay tuned. Q1, it will be released. So, um, and as you can see, that uh, the, if we compare it the, the aligned model or instructed model to a baseline, we got much better performance. Sometimes, like from five to twenty percent, even, which is huge, huge achievement. Um, and uh, what I wanted to say in the end as well, if you think that you have some use case, which you think that that it's possible to do alignment or fine, fine tuning, or you can get the data. Um, Come to us and let's talk. Thank you.